From Mammoth Mountain, California, Jeep King of the Mountain competition gets underway. It's the first time ever women have competed in the Jeep King of the Mountain racing. Katie Shackelford from the USA, a qualifier against a veteran from Germany, Katarina Gutensen. And Gutensen, with 68 top 10 World Cup finishes, is a veteran of the racing world. And it really is a classic setup. We have Shackelford, a skier ex-champion, and then Gutensen, a World Cup champion. And you can see Gutensen is just skiing very clean here, just leaving Katie in the dust. Gutensen really lining up here for the Y, carrying a lot of speed into the big air. The Y is where the two skiers merge to one course. Gutensen on the red, big and it air. is a big, big flight over the rollers. She looks more composed and across to win this match against Shackelford. Gutensen wins by the maximum margin, .96, and she loves it. The name's the same, but the game has changed. New rules, new gates, and a new attitude. Fasten your seatbelts, guys. Be ready for us because we're very fast. We did not travel so far for nothing. Sweden rules. For all those Europeans out there, this is our turf. Bring it on. special place where California sunshine meets the high Sierra, an X marks the spot of a resort called Mammoth Mountain. But today, we go beyond X to Y for the first stop in the Jeep King of the Mountain World Professional Skiing and Snowboarding Championship Series. Hello everyone, I'm Greg Lewis. Welcome to Fascination Racecourse, where today it is ski racing. And it will be fascinating indeed, because we introduce an all new concept in course design the Y Slalom. What's Y Slalom all about? Well, the man with the answers is the first Jeep King of the Mountain champion from 10 years ago and a two-time U.S. Olympian, Doug Lewis. Now, Doug, when you were racing on this series, it was just men, just downhill. Now, it's men, women, and Y Slalom? What's that? It is definitely something completely different. You know, it has GS at the top, it has the downhill speed in there at the bottom, but what's new is the Y in the middle. What happens is it starts in two courses, and at the Y, they come together. So imagine two skiers about this close, going 50 miles an hour, catching big air. It, anything can happen. And nobody's ever raced in this course before, so how are you going to pick the winners? We've got great skiers, but it's a total unknown. Right, this field is unbelievable. We have Olympic and World Cup champions, we have skier cross, and we have professional skiers. Who has the advantage? I don't know. But on the women's side, I look to Megan Garrity. She's proven, and she's a great technician. And then my dark horse, Katrin Goodenson from Germany. She's a wily veteran. On the men's side, I got two Americans. One, Olympic champion Tommy Moe. The other, a qualifier, Zach Chris. And they're all about to race. But first, let's check in with a third member of our broadcast team, former world snowboarding champion, Kevin Delaney. Kevin? So last year's reigning champion, Tommy Moe here. Great run, but this year's format, much different. They really pulled a fast one on you. You're right, Kevin. It's pretty tight up there. The course is actually really technical. Um, you know, you got 12 to 14 turns before the last couple jumps, so it's really exciting. It's going to be a great day out here. Well, your downhill skills seem to be paying off fast as usual. Back to you guys. Well, the rules for this wide slalom, individual competition, three rounds, single elimination, two runs per round. The margin of victory in the first run becomes the first run winner's start advantage in the second run. So in the rematch, first across advances. And in team competition, individual points awarded by placement, combined points determine the champion. Now we get set here for another preliminary matchup in this round of eight teams. Alicia Klein, a big star from the skier cross world and the X Games versus a veteran of the U.S. team and a big star there on the World Cup, Megan Garrity. Wow, great start for Megan. She's never seen these gates before, and uh, she just rips it out of the start. She takes that advantage onto the steeps. Megan Garrity, a downhiller when she was uh, on the U.S. team. And she is skiing like a giant slalom star now as she pulls two gates out in front of her Canadian opponent. Now she's in the most comfortable part for her, the downhill. Big air for Megan Garrity. Now she has the camel bumps. Skis very clean over those into the finish. 
Garrity with a huge win over Alicia Klein, .96. Again, that is the maximum time that one woman can beat another woman based on 4% of the fastest qualifying run. First men's pairing, Roman Torn, 92 Olympian for Canada. He goes against a big German, Martin Fiala, who is Gutensen's teammate. The Germans are going to be tough here. Fiala, no experience in head-to-head -head racing. Had a little trouble out of the gates. This is power versus power, two downhillers. They just want to get through these tough technical turns so they can let it roll on the bottom where they have more experience. Letting it run. Fiala on the red. Oh, there's a mistake by Fiala. You can see the snow there. Let's see if he can hold on to his speed heading into the big jump section. Fiala outweighs Torn by 60 pounds. Will his weight be a factor as we come across the finish line? Very close. Fiala, .16 behind. So that'll be the head start that Roman Torn gets in their rematch. Here in the replay, you can see Martin Fiala letting it run a little too straight, and he just makes a mistake, throws a lot of snow right there, gets out of balance, and that's probably where he lost the race. Tommy Moe of the USA will take the course when we return. Gold and silver from 94 Olympic Games. CBS Sports Spectacular presents Jeep King of the Mountain, sponsored by Jeep, the most respected, honored, and heroic 4x4s out there. Only in a Jeep 4x4. Charles Schwab. There's never been a better time for Charles Schwab. And by Paul Mitchell. Paul Mitchell is all about style. Your style. your lifestyle. Paul Mitchell lets you keep that look. Anywhere. Anytime. Paul Mitchell is all about style. Your style. Only your salon guarantees the real Paul Mitchell. If you're a fan of ski competition, you've seen downhill, you've seen skier cross, you've seen duels, but you've never seen anything like we have here at the Jeep King of the Mountain. Doug Lewis explains. The thing that makes the Jeep King of the Mountain Y course so unique is that it combines two classic elements of ski racing with something you've never seen before. First, it's a GS course, tight and technical, and they've added snowboard gates for the skiers. And to tell you the truth, the skiers are having trouble. Next, add in the pro dual format. So not only do skiers have to worry about what's going on in their course, they've got someone right beside them that they have to worry about. Now, let's add in the Y factor. Just after 13 gates of giant slalom, the two courses merge into one right here at the Y. You've got two skiers, 50 miles an hour, going over big air, rolls, all the way to the finish. Why slalom? Well, the attitude of the skiers competing here is, why not? This is Joseph Polig of Italy getting set for his first run, and he knows the risks of racing. He certainly does. Back three years ago, here at his first run at Jeep King of the Mountain, Joseph Polig makes a very bad mistake here at Beaver Creek, going about 70 miles an hour. Actually hurts his hip. He was out for the rest of the year, and he says his hip still affects him because of that crash. And it may also affect Joseph Polig's confidence as he goes against the great American Tommy Moe, who was a team champion last year in the Jeep King of the Mountain. Tommy looks for a good start here, very important, and not a very good start for Tommy. He's already about three-tenths of a second behind. Let's see what he does here up on the tough technical section of the course. Tommy just has to remain calm, not to try to get it all back at one point. Looks like he's skiing well. Tommy Moe now closing on Joseph Polig on the blue course. Moe will try to make his move on the flats where he brings into play his downhill skills. Head-to-head -head as they come off the big flight. Now the rollers. 
across, and Mo wins it by point two two in the first matchup against Joseph Pollock in the preliminary round. Here we can see where Tommy Mo wins this race. Coming into the Y section of the course, he's about two tenths of a second behind, but he loves the air. So as he carries speed into the big jump, it's important for all downhillers to lift their heels and get their skis to match the angle of the snow. You can see Tommy's match it. Joseph's going straight in the air. Then Tommy's back onto the snow quicker. He's in his tuck already, while Joseph Poleg is still trying to fight for control. And this allows Tommy to let him roll and take this first run of the preliminaries. For Poleg, little mistakes make a big difference. Now the second matchup of the preliminary round between Katarina Gutensen, who won big in the first run by .96, against Katie Shackelford, a qualifier here, who just showed up, raced in some qualifying runs, proved herself to be a capable skier, and made it to this round. Well, Katie Shackelford is trying to put the shack attack on. She has nothing to lose. Over on the blue course, though, Katarina Gutensen has got to remain focused. Even though she has, almost has a second lead, she's got to focus, ski clean. Looks like she's doing that heading into the Y and the big air. But Gutensen always confident when asked how she felt about this course. Did she have any weaknesses? She said, no, I have no weaknesses. So Gutensen shows that right here with another big win. And Gutensen over Shackelford. Gutensen advancing to the semifinals. And now at the top, another pair of women get set for their second match. Magdalena Janssen, a skier cross silver medalist, against a traditional alpine skier, Ophili David, who trails by .09 after their first run, and they are at a virtual dead heat as they come out. Ophili has a great start on the red course. This is the classic matchup. The Swede, a skier cross champion, against the World Cup superstar, Ophili. And they are just tight, head to head here. It's going to come up to who carries more speed into the Y and can take the jumps the best. And who will be more bold in the air? Magdalena coming off early and fast. Let's see if she can hold on. Magdalena, she wins that second run against David, and she is ecstatic. The Swede advances to the semifinals. And now it's Megan Garrity's turn to hold on as she has her second run against her opponent, Alicia Klein. Megan Garrity has that second advantage, and she's just got to remain focused. Again, Alicia Klein, a qualifier, has nothing to lose here. She's just going to let it go. Megan is keeping that almost second advantage here, almost building on it. Let's see if she can just ski clean and maintain that advantage all the way to the finish line. Klein on the red, a three-time gold medalist in the X Games will find herself X'd out here. Wow, big air from Megan Garrity into the finish. Garrity winning by 100 yards. A decisive win and a confidence builder for the American Tommy Moe's teammates. Megan had some wonderful skiing up on top. And a good sense of humor by Alicia Klein. As we watch the replay here, you can see Megan is so calm in the upper body. Her arms are nice and smooth, but in the lower body, she's dynamic, really pressuring the ski and letting it run. Let's go to Kevin Delaney. Megan, hot runs all day. The first round is over. Any strategy changes for the rest of the day? Uh, no, pretty much just uh, try to keep ahead of the course, make a good move over the jumps and have a good start. And most of all, just have fun. Have you ever watched a ski race from a chairlift or a snowboarding competition on TV and said, hey man, I can do that? Well, now you can. Beginning this December, you and a teammate can participate in the Jeep King of the Mountain Challenge, the first grassroots ski and snowboard program of its kind. This is your chance to challenge us pros. And it's happening at ski areas across the country. It's over 8 o'clock, and we'll have you all have meetings. And looks like you're all set. All right. Everyone who enters will need to ski a simple gated race course. Then they're eligible to win great prizes and advance to one of six regional championships. Winning teams from the regionals get a trip to Aspen, Colorado, and a chance to qualify for the season finale of the Jeep Yay! King of the Mountain. Whether you're a skier or a boarder, you can win a trip to my hometown, Aspen, Colorado. And you can take us on at the Jeep King of the Mountain World Championship. To find the ski resource where this unique event is happening, log on to www.jeepskiing.com. Welcome to the Jeep King of the Mountain series. This is our 10th and most exciting year yet. 
Olympic gold medalists, and world champions from around the globe will compete in both downhill racing and snowboarding for the very first time. Boarding and downhill, they fit Jeep perfectly. Jeep is about freedom, adventure. It's a go anywhere and do anything attitude. And just like Jeep, the athletes competing today are the best in the world at what they do. On behalf of Jeep and our dealers across America, enjoy the show. Now, let's get tricky. The tricks here will be up to Anders Vigarud, who trails by five hundredths of a second and his second duel against the Frenchman, Romo Lacinio. Anders is behind here, and he is the first seed coming into this. If anybody can make up the amount of time he needs to do it, Anders can. He's just got to remain calm and just take it one gate at a time. He's actually building a little speed here, catching up gate to gate. Let's see if he can do it. Licinio on the red, though, not making it easy as Vigarud now tries to close as they come to the bump. Licinio is catching. Here he is into the finish line. He's carrying a lot more speed than Licinio. It's too close to call. Very, very close at the finish, but it's Licinio who advances to the semifinal, squeezing out the victory in the last meters of the course. Anders just ran out of real estate here. You can see just pushing it. There's five hundredths of a second about a ski lane. Martin Fiala, the Jeep King of the Mountain champion in 96-97 in the old downhill format, looks over a little bit anxiously at his Canadian opponent, Roman Torn, their second matchup. Wow, Roman, incredible start. He was three-tenths of a second behind, but he made it up just in that perfect, perfect start. You can see him. He's almost winning the race right now. It's very close. Roman Torn on the red. Well, he is out in front. Another mistake right where Fiala did it in the first run of these two, and Torn just lost the speed coming in the jump. Now Fiala's just got to ride those sweet edges all the way to the finish. And Fiala flies across the finish line to take the second run and advance to the semifinals. Again, the first across in the second run advances at each round. Now Tommy Moe gets ready for his second race again. Two Olympic medals from 94. His opponent, Joseph Pollock, the Olympic gold in 92 in combined. A combination of downhill and slalom. So Pollock has the ability to come back. He trails by just over two tenths. Tommy nailed the bottom on the first run. Let's see how he does on the top of this course, this Y course on this run. Looks like he's skiing perfect. Pollock is going a little too straight. You can see how much snow, and he's very much in trouble, barely making the gates. Tommy's going to run away with this one. Tommy Moe, only three days on snow before coming to Mammoth. You'd never know it from the margin of victory here. The American advances to the semifinals with an easy win. Tommy knows this course now. He's nailed the bottom, and now he nails the top. Out of the start, smooth and clean. Already at the second gate, he's into a great rhythm. Getting on his ski early, coming under the gate, that allows him to carry that speed down the course. Wow, great skiing. So, Tom, you nailed that start. Came out early, but I have to tell you, he was catching you. Did you feel him behind you? I could feel him. He was right there coming on strong at the top section, and uh, I had a couple little errors, but then on the bottom, I felt like I really was laying the skis over and bending them and had a good run. Well, another nice note, Megan Garrity has also advanced, so uh, the USA team looking strong. How are you feeling about that? We're psyched. Uh, Megan's skiing well, and I'm actually getting better every run, so... We're as good as any of the other teams out here. It'd be nice to have uh, us be in the top three at the end of the day. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Kevin. The Americans confident as we get set for the second round on the women's side. Gutenson faces Merlin. Gutenson was tough. And Johnson against the tough American, Garrity. For the men, the pairings break down this way. Licinio of France versus Fiala of Germany. And two Americans face off. The qualifier, Zach Christ, against the tough, tough Tommy Moe, whose teammate, well, Megan Garrity smiles, says it all. She thinks she can win for the women. But the American qualifier, Zach Chris, thinks he can topple Tommy Moe. And everyone enjoying a magnificent day here, which is absolutely ideal for ski racing. Now we are set for the semifinals from Italy. Barbara Merlin, three-time Olympian, a veteran of the race courses against an even stronger veteran, Katarina Gutenson, 18 World Cup top three finishes. 
their first matchup of the semis. There's so many elements to this course, both of them out of the start great. Now they have to do the GS, then head into the Y, and then the quick big air and downhill to finish. Looks like Goodenstone, who has ruled this course all morning, continues to rule, but you know what? A lot happens at the bottom of this course. Gutenson being closed on by Merlin on the blue. Merlin making her move. Merlin is definitely catching. Let's see if she can get that aerodynamics and get to the finish first. Off the rollers, Gutenson squeezes it out by point one, two, and she really lost some speed at the bottom. Gutenson may be vulnerable when those two meet again. Now it's time for Megan Garrity of the USA with two clean wins over Klein in the preliminary round to go against Magdalena Jonsson of Sweden, who is quite tough. Jonsson, a veteran of skier cross and pro racing. She gets a great start. A little bit of a barge there. Those gates only open when they want to open, and Magdalena almost barged. And I'll tell you, those gates will bite back. Great race here going on. Megan's got to make up some of that time she lost in the start, but she can do it heading into the Y. She carries more speed, and let's see if she gets off the jump first. Garrity on the left will be first off the bump, and now they come into the rollers, and Garrity really capitalizing on her downhill experience to win by point four, three. Slow at the top, but speedy at the bottom to take the lead in their first pairing. Megan Garrity skiing very strong at the top, letting her legs do all the work. She's not on the best line here. She's actually offline. But you know what? The experience of the World Cup pays off. She just stays with it and lets the speed happen. Now we switch to the men's pairing. Martin Fiala, the big man from Germany, defeated Roman Torn of Canada in the preliminary round. And his opponent, Romod Licinio of France, a smooth skier. A great start for both of them. Licinio's kind of the unknown here. He was seated eighth because he fell in the seating run, but he is skiing out of his mind today, really letting it run. Fiala's got to start, take some chances here to try to catch up. Licinio putting the pressure on Fiala. Fiala tries to make his move. And Fiala's out, out of the course here. He's going to have to take the maximum time going into the second run. So Licinio will take the victory by the maximum time, which is... 4% of the fastest qualifying run, or 0.94. Licinio, 0.94 head start when they meet again. You can see Licinio and Martin Fiala heading into the Y, basically the same. Martin needs to ski a high line to carry more speed, but he dives in, he takes chances, and what happens is he should be here, but no, his ski spread apart, he's in trouble, and heading towards the fence. Here he pays for it, he just can't make up that kind of line, goes down, and skis out. Has a little fun here, but that twister won't score him any points going into the second run. A pre-race favorite, Martin Fiala, has to make up a second to make it to the finals. Now at the top, a qualifier gets ready to race. Zach Christ had a bye in the first round. He comes to this event from the wild side of skiing, skier cross. It's got to help to have been doing some skier cross and be familiar with going head to head and being able to concentrate on your own game while there's someone next to you. And, you know, if that's an advantage, I'll take it. But uh, I don't think, you know, I would say that it's an overwhelming advantage with guys like gold medalist Tommy Moe. But Tommy Moe does not know this game of head-to-head -head racing very well, Doug Lewis. He may have an Olympic gold medal, but this is an all-new discipline. He's only had a couple runs to practice to start. Let's see how he gets out this time. Zach Chris twisted tight with intensity and a great start. He definitely nails the start. He's already got a half-gate lead. Tommy, his experience tells him just focus on his own course and just ski as well as he can. Let the rest happen at the bottom where he nails it. Mo is fighting to catch up and Chris on the red course is giving him nothing. Into the top. Can Mo close it? No, it's going to be Zach Chris with a smooth flight off the rollers to win it by almost three tenths. A decisive victory over Tommy Moe. Zach Chris gets this three tenths right out of the start. Incredible timing. He just nails it. Into the first gate, you can see he's a half gate ahead. Now he's focusing on what he needs to do. Moe's just got to get him out of his head and focus on his run. 
Zachris qualifying out of the open field, meeting Tommy Moe, and you definitely laid down the law there. Very fast run. How'd you feel? I was good and clean. And, uh, you know, it's got to take two runs, so we'll see what happens now. And how about the start? You seem to just jump out of that start. Do you have uh, timing gates wired or is it something you practice a lot? It's just, you know, it, it's a tough one because you do have to, you have a visual, but you got to time it right. It worked out for me, and hopefully it'll happen again. Good luck for the rest of the day. Thanks a lot. Well, today they're flying on the race course, and they're flying in the half pipe at this California resort that has everything. They don't call this place Mammoth for nothing. With over 3,500 skiable acres, Mammoth Mountain is one of the largest ski areas in North America. 27 lifts transport skiers and riders from beginner to expert to a wide range of terrain. Whether your passion is powder or half pipe, you couldn't find a more spectacular setting to indulge in. And with new lodging and lifts set to open in 2003 as part of a multi-million dollar expansion, Mammoth Mountain is getting even bigger and better. And victory will make it still better for the Germans, Martin Fiala and Katarina Gutensen. They'll be racing in the second round of the semifinals when we return. It's just the beginning of the ski season at Mammoth Mountain, California. But today, it's like a perfect spring day. Jeep King of the Mountain, second run of the semifinals. The women's pairing, Katarina Gutensen. She's been tough in all her matches. She goes against Barbara Merlin of Italy, who trails by only 12 hundredths. Gutensen cannot afford to make a mistake. Well, there's your mistake, Greg. Already, Gutensen has lost her advantage, but she's onto the course, the part of the course where she has ripped all day. She has been perfect on these turns, skiing clean and just gaining speed at each turn. Merlin on the red, a three-time Italian Olympian, is now dropping behind. Here goes Gutensen into the downhill tuck, and she was a downhiller on the World Cup. Gutensen back into her tuck. No problem here advancing. So, Katarina Gutensen will go on to the finals, and she has got the pigtails, but is as wily as a fox in these races. Back up here we see Barbara Merlin not skiing clean. You see all the snow being get it away that's just not fast skiing and allowed Goodenson to take this run Goodenson here at the bottom just carrying a lot of speed not backing off kind of rolling down the windows but back into her tuck Goodenson advancing to the final 